So I was having a little look around to find this and it's the book that I took with me to my visits. And I just jotted down a couple of things um, and it was actually quite nice to, because I've just found it today, I was having a rummage and it was nice to have a little flick through of actually. It brought back quite a lot of memories of the family. Yeah, it's lovely to read through it again. It was incredible that they would let us into our, their home and talk about something that might be quite difficult to talk about with strangers that they've only just met. And um, it was a great experience. I enjoyed it a lot. The family that I got to see were a husband and wife, and the husband was the um, person with dementia. He had a mixed Alzheimer's and vascular dementia, and the wife was the main carer. Um, and we were actually really lucky because we got to see um, the family within three or four weeks of the diagnosis. So of, over the three years we got to follow them on their journey from like the start um, to when we finally um, said goodbye to them. And I think that was really interesting um, because we got to see how um, rampant um, or how everyone responded um, to the diagnosis, especially the carer because we asked her, oh, what would you like us to say to people about dementia? And she said that the care is with them all the time and we do struggle. Um, and that still stays with me today, I think, because even when I see patients that don't have dementia, I'll try and like, oh, hang on, how's this going to influence like, the patient's family, not just the patient? Um, the lady I was with at the family, she, she quite liked poetry. And she, she wrote um, a poem about kind of her experience of, I guess, becoming a carer, if you if you want to use that word. And I wrote the first line of it because it, it stuck with me. Um, Today I lost a part of you, a part of you that was here yesterday. And that was the first visit. I forgot that, that was at the first visit. And I think that kind of shows you how they let us in. And that poem obviously was very personal. So I forgot, I forgot that was at the first visit actually. So when I first got the details about the family I was due to visit, my first impression was surprise at how much experience they had both personally and professionally with dementia. Um, so one had previously acted as a care worker for dementia before retiring and the other individual had also previously cared for someone with dementia. So they had a really significant amount of experience, which can be quite intimidating, I suppose, when, when you feel that you've got so little at the time. I didn't know much about dementia when I started, but I absolutely did by the time it had finished because my family, not only did we have great conversations, but they gave me a file of patient information leaflets, uh, information about the condition, advocacy groups, everything, and just handed me this file and let me borrow it for several months. So it sort of worked quite nicely to link that sort of personal element of dementia with the healthcare area of dementia and how those two can overlap and how you can sort of help each other in that situation. I'd seen people in acute hospital settings where they, you just see that person there and at that time and space when they're unwell. But going into the dementia family, I really learned such a lot that actually this lady had a huge history that I knew nothing about. And I was learning about that as I went. And it, I think it's been really valuable to me to know that, yes, when I go on to my career in a hospital, that when I'm caring for someone with dementia, that I've got to remember that that person's got this big life behind them, probably a really interesting one, and it's worth getting to know. I would definitely say to a new cohort of student nurses that were taking part in the programme, take a minute, okay, and Although it might seem overwhelming and a bit kind of, why do I need to do this? How is that going to benefit me? Just take a step back because actually, you know, this is really, really fruitful for your future. Because although you're going to be working predominantly in an acute setting as your first post as a newly qualified nurse, this is giving you exposure to the outside and into the community where people actually live. So you can then compare 
acute hospital setting with what they're likely to be doing at home. Whether that be positive or negative, that will then help direct you when you're coming to discharge your patient from acute care. What struck me was he wasn't angry at all with the diagnosis. I mean, he, had, he said he had been in the past and sometimes it, been quite, it had been quite tough on him and his partner. But um, he said that over the years they slowly kind of adapted and it was just, it, it didn't, he said it doesn't, it doesn't define me. I remember that, it doesn't define me. It's, it's just something I have. It, I'm still me kind of thing. And that was, that was a nice moment actually. I think you learn a different level of respect for people. In a, in a, it sounds very strange, but you, because you are so involved and you appreciate more and more the position they're coming from, I think you start to really admire them and really admire what, what they're up against on a daily basis um, and at those challenges they have to encounter day in and day out. So I think it does change the way you view patients as a whole because I think it's quite easy to forget just what's going on outside of the hospital but actually how important that is on someone's health and in fact the health of a whole family. I always remember leaving visits feeling just happier it was just it was just a nice it was a nice environment and again it was even though I suppose the reason of this is a learning opportunity as well but it was also kind of good for the soul in a way I will always remember them I will always remember our family that we visited because they were great human beings they were just they were lovely yeah